Hey everybody, this is Pete Wenzel and today I'm going to show you how to add some background to our scene. In this second background video I'm going to cover the terrain. Adding the sky will not be part of this video. If you're interested in this topic, check out my linked video. We will first create a new landscape source at the background and second create a particle emitter as we already did in tutorial number 3 which will be linked to. Hide everything but the background collection, select it and hide the sky. Add a new landscape for the background. Shift A, Mesh, Landscape. As already mentioned, I will not do a deep dive into the landscape generator. But I prefer the following settings. Large landscape, change the height and set the falloff to Y. In object tab of the context menu we set a name. Landscape background source. In the following we will split the single landscape square into two rectangle objects. Go to top view and in edit mode select one half of the object. Be sure that this half has the fall off at the longer side. Press P and choose selection. Now we have created two background objects. Show the scene landscape again. Now move the background behind the foreground and rotate both objects to have the flat parts looking forward to the landscape. A gap between foreground and background could help to reduce the total amount of vertices needed. And at the end it will not be noticed by the audience. If you have a big mountain in the foreground blocking the view to the background, you do not need to create a background there. But in this case I have to create the background across the whole scene. Do you see this empty patch over there? We have to fill it. Depending on your point of view, moving one background object into this direction may solve this problem, but I would like to scale one in this direction. Therefore select one, scale it in this particular direction and then move it in this direction too. Do it again until it covers the whole area. Ensure the background landscape starts lower than the scene landscape. Otherwise you will see the gaps. You can check this in wireframe view with the background selected. With proportional editing enabled, we can lower or raise certain points of the landscape and all other will move a little bit depending on their distance. If you like this video, share it with your friends, give me a thumb up and feel free to ask further questions in the comments below. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Go to edit mode and select one vertex which has to be lower. Enable proportional editing, then press G for moving this vertex and Z for only allow moving along Z axis. If you are now scrolling the mouse wheel, you will see the influence radius of the editing change its size. Lower the position beneath the foreground landscape surface and use a proportional editing radius matching the contour of your foreground best. Now repeat this until there are no gaps anymore. If you like, you could raise some background mountains as well or change the Z scaling and position too. After you're done with the background, select both objects and merge them again pressing Ctrl J. First step done, now we will emit some bricks. Duplicate the emitter object of the bricks and the plants using Shift D. Move it below the background landscape object. Toggle the particle systems and the shrink warp modifier. Add two array modifier and move them to the top. One for X and one for Y direction. Set the amount high enough to cover the whole background and apply both modifiers. Change the target of the shrink warp modifier to the background landscape and enable it in the viewport again. Now remove all vertices of the emitter object which are not affected by the shrink warp modifier. 
if you have problems to decide what should be removed because too many objects blocking your view. Change the view mode to solid, move the particle emitter of the background to the background collection and hide everything else. Enable the brick particle system and one plant particle system. The second plant particle system could be deleted because I do not care about vegetation distribution at our background landscape. In edit mode, we check the amount of vertices of our background particle emitter. But before we set the number of emitted particles to the exact same value, we have to duplicate the particle setting because currently it references to the same particle system. Duplicate the particle settings, rename it and then we could change the particle number. Same for the plant's particle system. Duplicate it, rename it and change the settings. First, we change the instance collection to plants, which is the mother collection of trees and grass. So the generated objects are picked from both child collections. And second, we toggle the use count option. Third, we unlink the density texture to this particle system to get an even distribution of all plants across the background landscape. And fourth is to change the amount of particles until we have the result we are looking for. If the system performance is a little bit low, for proper working you may be interested in one of the following tips. If your performance is still pretty well, you probably reached the end of this video. First and most effective is to disable the entire background collection in the viewport. But in most cases you would like to get a feeling of the scene look while doing the animation. So hide everything may not be the best solution for you. Second is to only hide one or both particle systems in the viewport. But keep the emission object. This is your landscape. Yeah, it's not pretty anymore, but you get a higher performance. Third is to select the source object for the particle emission and in object properties tab on the viewport display change the display as from textured to bounce. What this does is display this object and all instances of it, no matter if link duplicated or particles, always as bounding boxes. This is independent from your current viewport shading. There may be some other ways to speed up the working space, but by now the three should be enough for this tutorial. If you have some handy tips, use the comment function. Now we can enable the scene collection again and have a look at our result. Oh! Hmm. If you don't see anything, then you should adjust the size of your sky dome. There's a briggy landscape and a sky at the background. And that would be the end of this tutorial. In the next video I will show you how to blend the foreground and background together using depth of field and mist. Now you have reached the end of this video. But this doesn't mean you have to talk to real people. You may be interested in my new video over there. Or you could watch this recommended video. And as a last opportunity, there are many more videos for you at my channel.